All right, well, welcome to lesson one, and we're going to reintroduce Python to you. For those who don't know, this is advanced programming for GIS, and I'm Professor Chipkowski, and this is the 2020 um, class. So let's get going. Today, we're going to cover the following topics. We're going to look at some data types, arithmetic operators, comparison operators, review conditionals, loops, some IO functions, and then how to write your own custom function in Python. And all these concepts are going to be really important as we move on through the class. So I want to make sure you have a refresher in there. So let's look at some data types. And we're going to, in what we're, what we're going to do is we're going to create variables. And variables are going to represent something of a given type, a thing that's stored within a fixed set of memory. And all that means is we can declare a variable. And let's see what happens when we run it. So we're going to assign to the variable B the number two, which is an integer. And then we're going to take B and we're going to multiply it by two and print out the result. And we can see that we change from an integer to a float. And that's what happened here that we see. So B is first an integer and then after multiplication, B becomes type float. Uh, a, another data type that's really common within Python is strings. And strings are a sequence of characters enclosed by either a single or double quotes. And what do I mean by this? So what we have here is we have a bunch of text that's enclosed within a, our double brackets, and that shows as a, sprint, as a string. And we also have it enclosed in a single bracket, and that means it's also a string as well. Um, when you look at this here with, with the double single quotes, you couldn't have a double quote and then put a single quote at the end, it would still see it as a string. And if we were to run this code, we would get an error saying that there's a, uh, you know, a string literal error. Basically, you didn't close the string. So we have to put that, you have to match whatever your beginning uh, single or double quote is with the uh, same at the end. There's a lot of uh, operations that you can perform on strings, like lowercase, uppercase, you know, and um, here's a link where you can look at some of the various functions. So for example, if you wanted to look at upper, uh, you can use the capitalize. So here we're going to uh, take spam, eggs, and bacon, and we're going to make them all capital letters. We can split the, by letters as well. So if we wanted to take this string and split it into an array, and this is our basically our splitting point, which is M, we'd get our strings split, we could change this variable and we could change it to a comma, which would probably make more sense. And then we get spam, eggs, and bacon. Strings are immutable. So we let's say we have our variable S again, which is spam, eggs, and bacon. We can change variable and you can see that we can't, by index of our string, we can't change the first letter in our string to C. Another important data type is a tuple. And what a tuple is, is it's a sequence of arbitrary objects separated by commas, and they're enclosed in parentheses. You'll notice when we did the split of the string that what was returned was a series of strings enclosed by square brackets. And that implies that it's a list. And lists can be changed, so they're mutable. But like our strings, this is immutable, which means once it's created, that's what it is. So let's go ahead and create a tuple. So we're going to create two here. Our first one is just going to be a single item tuple. So we have our open parentheses, the value that we want, comma, close parentheses. And then we also have T2, which is, and notice that we have various types. So we're putting two strings, a negative number, a negative integer, a float, and then we're also putting a tuple in. So it doesn't matter what you put in your tuple. It can be a collection of things, objects. If we go to try to change it, we see that we can't, it doesn't support item assignment because, because it's immutable. Also recall, you'll notice that both with the string example and with the tuple example, Python uses zero base indexing. So the first item in a list is zero, not one. And if we were to, in, if we recall from our tuple example from previous, that if we put in T2 of one, we would get back the second item, which would be cat. And we can see this here.
another and very important data type that you can actually change after you create it are lists. And they can, like tuples, they're a sequence of arbitrary objects. So that means you can basically smash anything into lists and they're mutable. So that means we can edit them. So let's see how that works. So we're going to, we're going to instantiate a, um, a variable. We're going to call it L and we're going to assign it a bunch of things. So we have a, B one, two. So we have mixed types because it's, it doesn't matter. And then we're going to go ahead and change the first item on our list from a to C. And let's see what happens to our list. And we can see that we changed a to C in our list and the rest of the list remains the same. Pretty cool. We can then change the second item in our list, the dog. And then we can see that we have C dog one, two. You can see how our list changed from AB to C dog. We can slice lists. So we um, just like strings, if you went and looked at the help, you can do uh, slicing on our lists. So if you want to get a section of a list, what we do is we just take any list object and we provide it a starting index. The default is the first object. Then we put the end index, so where we want to start to, where we want to stop to, and the number of steps we want to take over. Default step size is one, but you could change it to two, three, four, whatever. So let's take a look. We have a list. Let's say we're going to start two, go to five, we're going to return, and we're going to take one step for each one. We can change it to get every other step starting at the, our first position, and you see that we go every two. So, and to get more information on what you can do with lists, uh, here's a link to the, the help for lists. Uh, another important thing to know about that you can do within Python is arithmetic operators and the common operators are addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, uh, exponential is two stars and modular division is the percent sign. You can extend them to, um, beyond numbers. So let's say you want to concat two strings. So we're going to take hello. S1 is hello. S2 is world. We want to create a new string S3. So we're going to, we're going to combine, um, S1 plus S2 and print it out. And we see we, our new variable contains both S1 and S2 joined together. And then we have another example here. Where we can do the same thing with lists. So we're going to join a one, two, three with four, five, six, seven, eight, and negative 15. We're going to combine the two lists. And it doesn't add up the numbers in position. What it does is it, it'll join the list together in the order that we put them in. Uh, there's some shorthand operations that we can do. So let's say you want to add a number A and you just want to add B to it. So, and reassign it back to A. So we can do A plus equals B is the same thing as saying A equals A plus B. And it's the same for all the other examples that we have as we go down. So a times equals B is a equals a times B, etc. So we can do this and we can print out a little example here. So we're going to say a is uh, 10,000 and we're going to go make, do a for loop, go five times through it. And we're going to uh, add whatever I is to a and assign it back to a. So we see that we get 10,000, 10,001, 10,003, et cetera, et cetera. And so that was just a shorthand of doing it. Uh, we can do comparison operations by checking if something is less than or greater than, you know, uh, all these operations equal to, not equal to. Notice that when you're checking equal and not equal, uh, equal to, it's double equal signs, not a single. Single is for assignment, double is for comparison checking. So we can check if A is greater than B. We can check if B is equal to C. We can see we get false, which is expected. The general uh, way you construct if statements, a single if statement would just be if, whatever the condition is, um, followed by a colon, and then you would provide the logic if that's true. And then you could say else colon, which is a default value whenever this condition is not meant. So let's say we want to check for the sign of a value for any number. So there's three conditions that need to be met. We can have, if a is less than zero, we're going to return the minus sign. If a is greater than zero, we're going to return the plus sign. And then if it's zero, 
we're going to say we're going to return zero because we didn't want to say that zero was positive. So the first one we see we get back uh, minus. If we change this to, let's say, 100, we're going to get back the plus. And if we set it to zero, we're going to get back zero as expected. So we used our conditional logic to, to handle all that. Loops uh, is going to execute code based on some condition or or for a given number of times. While loops, the syntax goes while some condition, some Boolean condition, we're going to keep executing some code. So let's take an example of this. What we're going to do is we're going to create three variables and we're going to say a equals an empty list, m equals zero, n equals three. And we're going to say while m is less than n, we're going to do our code here. So we're going to append to a, so stick it at the end of our list, m divided by 3, and then we're going to add 1 back to m. And then at the end, we're going to show our results. So let's see what happens. So we go through, and for the first time, this executes, we do m divided by 3, 0. Now m is going to be go from 0 to 1. It checks the condition. It's not met. We're going to append it again. So we get 1 third. We're going to go again. Now m is 2, so the condition is still true. We're going to do the next step. We get 2 thirds. We're going to add 1. Now, the, now m is 3. It's not less than 3, so we're going to stop doing our logic within our while loop, and then we're going to print out, and now we're going to execute the code that's beyond our while loop, which is printing out a, the variable. We have uh, for loops is the other one. So we're going to loop over a given block of code uh, on a sequence or for a number, uh, yeah, for a sequence. So the format for this is for variable in and then our sequence. So this can be an array, uh, a list, a tuple. And we're going to do that logic for whatever, how many ever many items are within that sequence. So we're going to take advantage of a built-in function called range. And this is going to give us all values starting at 0, uh, going to 9 to give us our 10 values. And we're going to add b. And then we're just going to show the total, display the total value of b. So for each, so what, what we're basically going to do is we're going to say for each item in this range, we're going to assign to the variable i, and then we're going to say b, and we're going to add it to b, whatever i is. And we could expand this code if you wanted to show what i was by putting a print in there, and we can see that it goes from 0 to 9. And all we're doing is summing all the variables from 0 to 9, and then printing out the total of 45. It doesn't just have to be numbers, so uh, or it doesn't have to be just this range function that we used here for this, from the standard library. It can be your own defined list. So let's say I have a list of strings, and I want to run it, and then display, and we can see that um, we have a dog jumped, was appended. We appended a string together to this variable a, and we get a dog jumped. So we ha also have the ability to read and write data within the standard library of Python. This is really helpful when you get CSV files um, or uh, text files or even binary files if you have a something that needs you to read the binary within there, so maybe another module or library. And we're going to follow, it follows the standard pattern when you want to open something. So you take a variable name and then you call open. You provide the path to the, um, to the thing we want to read and then the action, read or write, and then our action. We have read and write here. Uh, R and W, so R is the what you would put in for the action as a string, and that's the description here. And then we can even append to the end of a file. So let's say we have an existing string file, then 
we don't want to write it because when you write it, it's going to create a new file. So it'll overwrite whatever we have. Um, so we want to, if you want to add to the end, you want to do append, not write, if you want to persist that data. And we'll see that in a second. So uh, the three methods for reading a file, first we'll take out the simple thing, is we can read, which will, and then, so we take our file object, which we may created before from open, and we do dot read, and we provide the number of characters that we want to read in n. Or we can read lines, where n equals the number read line, or and then say the number of line things we want to read, the uh, characters. And then we can say read lines, which reads all lines in the file. And to extract all lines one by one, let's say, let's say we want to do that. We can use the, uh, here's some little, a shorthand to make sure that we always close our file object after we're done. We're going to use what's called with. So with open, we're going to provide a path. And we're gonna, we, since we want to read, we're going to provide the string R as, and then our variable name. And then we can say for line in FO, which is our file object, and we can print out the line. Now, the opposite of reading is writing. So we're, what we're going to do is we can write, uh, we can write some files and we can write to file. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to do fo.write and we can write in a string and this will write in a single string to our file or we can write lines and we can pass in a list of things we want to write to the file. So let's see how that works. So we're going to do, this time we're not going to use the with statement. We're going to just use um, the standard syntax. So we're going to be, we have to close it manually. So we're going to say our file object, open, test, dot text and w for write 4k in this range that we have from 100 to 111 we're going to write the values also we're going to put in a new line character and then we're going to close it we're going to go ahead and write it and then we can go back and we can read that information in and we can see that we get we see our variables here 100 you know, 10,000 new line character and all that. So that's how you read and write real quick. And then the last thing we're going to cover and um, talk about is defining functions or methods. And it's uh, this is going to define a collection of code that should perform a single piece of logic or task, but you might need to use it multiple times. So you don't have to rewrite your code over and over again. So this, recall the syntax for this review. It all starts with def, the function name, parameter list, which is optional. So you can have from uh, zero parameters to n, provide some documentation, you, you write in your logic, and then you can optionally return a variable. If you don't put a return statement in here, all functions return none. So Here's an example. So I have a function I'm going to call, it's going to be called first method. It's going to take three variables, a, b, and c, and I put a doc string. I'm going to say, I say in the beginning, because I want to know either for myself or for other people that might be using this code, a brief description of the code. I say it takes an integer, a string, and a float, and it returns a new string. So the first variable is a string, the second one's an integer, and the third one's a float. And it's going to return, the return type is string. So now when I go ahead and run this method, we can see I passed in a1 in 1.2, and it returns back the string of all those variables. Another function, way to create functions is to use lambdas. And what lambdas are, is they're basically a, a one-line function. They're short, and um, they're a quick expression that don't that doesn't require that whole uh, function definition and you can use lambda functions for a whole bunch of things uh, one way to use it is if you're familiar with pandas and if you're not we'll cover it later in the class but um, you can use them to, on apply functions or just quick one-off functions that you don't want to persist throughout your whole code but doesn't require you to de define uh, a whole function so the syntax is very simple you just do function name so variable equals the word lambda your input parameters, so parameter one, parameter two, and then colon, and then your code. 
let's say you just need a quick function to calculate area. So you just do area equals lambda, so length times width for area for our uh, square rectangle, colon, and then the variable L times W. Notice we didn't have to put a return in there because it's just going to return whatever L times W is. So let's go ahead and execute that. And now we can go ahead and use it just like we would a regular function. So area 10 times 10 is 100. 